Okay, if you're using the terminal to do work, then the reality is you'll be typing a lot of text and that text needs to be accurate for your commands to function. And it's also nice if they can be quick. We're going to go through a few of those key commands now, which will make your life a lot easier in the long run. So let's build up a dummy command that we can navigate around. Okay, so say we wanted to move to the start of this line. Well, instead of using the arrow keys, we could use control A, A for the start of the alphabet. If we wanted to get to the end of the command, we can use control E. If we wanted to go back one character, we can use control B. And if we wanted to go forward one character, we can use control F. If we wanted to go back one word or one item, we can use Alt B. And if we wanted to go forward one item or word, we can use Alt F. If we wanted to delete a character before the cursor, we can use backspace. And if we wanted to um, delete a whole word or item, we can use Alt Backspace. If we wanted to undo the last change we made, we can press Control forward slash or Control Y. And let's say we wanted to edit this command in a text editor instead of building it just on one line. Maybe it's a multi-line command or it's a, a long command or we're just composing it over time. Then we can edit this command in a text editor with Control X control E for edit and that's going to open it up in whatever our default text editor is in this case it's nano so we can just use nano to change this command and then to run it you would do what you would usually do to save the file in the text editor so there we go now it's run that command one nice function in the terminal as well is the clear function so let's just run a bunch of commands here and we've got a full screen. Let's say we wanted to clear that. Well, we could type in clear and that would clear it. Or we could type in control L and that's the shortcut for clear. Okay, so while we've been typing these commands in, Bash has been saving these commands in a history file. And if we type history, we can see all the commands I've just run in this session. Now, if we wanted to redo a command, we can cycle through this history using Control p for previous or Control n for next. You can also use the up and down arrow as well. If we wanted to search through these commands, let's say I wanted to run this, this is a dummy command again, well we can use Control r for reverse search, start typing in the command and it's going to pick it up. So this is what I've just typed, THI, and Bash has searched through this history, found this. And say we wanted to just run this, we can press Control E for end, and that's going to input it into the terminal for us, and we can then run it. We've also got tab completion in the terminal as well, and this is super useful. Let's say I wanted to cat out the contents of this index.html here, but I could do cat, then a space. Now we could type in index.html, and that would be fine. Or I could just start typing, and then press tab, and it's going to auto complete that because index.html is the only possible thing it could be. And let's run that command. Now, let's say I wanted to tab complete. This is a long file name. Now, in this case, there are two files in here with a similar name. So let's see what happens. If I do cat and then start typing, then press tab for tab completion, Bash is going to say, okay, there are options here. I can't complete it any further than here. Now if you press tab a couple more times, it's going to give you the options that you can type in. So let's say I wanted this one, fill it in, press enter, and there we go. So before we use control X, control E to open our command in an editor, and it opened it up in nano in my case, well, this is just a little bonus, but if we wanted to change the default value of our text editor, we can edit it. Um, so if we use a text editor, we can edit the dot profile file now dot profile is in your home directory and it's just called dot profile it might not exist in which case you can just create it like this now if we go down to this section here it might not be in your dot profile it depends what distro you're running but all we need to do is just type editor now this is the 
global variable here, the environment variable editor, and we're going to assign it the value of whatever text editor we want. So let's change it to um, Vim for me. And you just save and quit. And then you need to source that file. So we type source, then the location of the dot profile file. And now when I edit command, I'm in that text editor. And that's bash shortcuts. Um, super useful, very easy to learn. But if you learn them from the get go, you'll just save a lot of time.